if I may have your attention, please. I'd like to call the uh, Black City Council work session um, April 2nd uh, to order. A couple of things that we want to uh, discuss before we get into the regular meeting. Uh, first one is Matt. Are you going to come talk to us about the request for the advertising? Uh, good evening, council members. Uh, this is a request to re advertise a rezoning. Uh, the property is located on what will be the new extension of uh, <coughs> Veterans Parkway and, and Thompson. Uh, this is a request to rezone uh, the property from R4, uh, C2, and C3 to a planning unit development. It would be a mixed use development. Uh, that would have a variety of uses tying into the different uh, locations that are there, including uh, kind of high traffic commercial right there on the uh, gateway intersection, uh, and then uh, some different uses that will tie into uh, the uh, business park behind uh, across the street from Kroger that extends all, so we'll extend all the way through this property, and then finally some residential that will tie into the back park. Do we have to have those? Uh, all of the different owners sign off on the Yes, sir. So all of the, uh, I believe there are three separate uh, entities that are part of this, all different LLCs, and they all have to sign off on the request to do so. And they're all working in, in agreement. They donate in the right way? Uh, so that will be part of the development agreement that will likely come uh, with the rezoning uh, that will include the, uh, the right of way as well. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Hey. Hey, 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 Matt, while you're there, um, the, you all had a meeting on, uh, with, the, with Daniel Holland and that group? I, I was out of town for that meeting. Okay. Todd, can you fill us in? Uh, yes, Mr. President. So we had a meeting with Holland Homes and 32 constituents <laughs> that were over in the um, over in that neighborhood, and they made a um, proposal on what they kind of wanted to do, and I'm planning on talking about some of that during the discussion tonight, but uh, we did have that meeting, I think it was, where I attended over at the chamber, um, for the last Friday, I think. Mm -hmm. Does that sound right, George? That's Friday. I mean, uh, George and um, Erica were also there. Okay. They might have some more information. All right. Any, uh, any comments about that? Um, would you like to go? No. Okay, I'm, I'm going to share mine as well when we get to that point in the agenda, but I do want to commend um, the citizens that did show up on the Friday evening to come out and express their desires. Thank you. All right. Um, anything else? Russell? Okay, then we'll take a break and we'll start promptly at uh, 6 o'clock. I may have the attention. I'd like to call the Oklahoma City Council meeting of April 2nd, 2024 to order. Call roll, please. Mr. Jones. Mr. Allen. Here. Ms. Moore. Present. Hey. Mr. Ralph. Here. Ms. Here. Uh, we're honored to have Craig Lee from Oak Hill Church here with us. We're going to have a thing that's in our invitation. I'm going to ask him to make his way to the podium. And then we're going to have uh, Leo Massey and Braxton Lipscomb from Oklahoma Middle School. Uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, if you all would stand. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, in the stillness of this time, we give you thanks for a city called Ophelika. For Scripture tells us, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And Ophelika has recognized that you are Lord. It's on the very placard in the room that says we are rich in heritage and our heritage comes for you. But it also says we have a vision for the future and our vision is in you. Father, as we conduct business tonight, let us be respectful of each other. Let us be open in our ideas and let us look to you to guide us in our decision making. For the decisions that are right may not always be popular. 
But we ask, Lord, that you be with us in those decisions to lead and to guide this city into the future. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You all that uh, previously received the minutes of the March 19, 2024 council meetings, is, uh, is there any addition to, or is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. The addition and deletions are correct. Having none, they will stand as presented. Mr. Mayor? Mr. President, members of the council, ladies and gentlemen, um, one announcement before we make some presentations. I hope you'll put on your calendar for Saturday, April 13th, Courthouse Square Community Cleanup Day, formerly known as Slam Dunk the Junk, will take place on April 13th, 9 to 11 o'clock. Biscuits and a drink will be provided to anyone who picks up and returns to the garbage to us for that day. For more information, you can go to oaklock-al.gov or keep up a lot of you. Tonight we're going to recognize some folks. First, uh, I'd like to invite Chief Peeley, Major Clifton, and Sergeant Glover to come down. Tonight we're going to recognize graduates from the 20 under 40 students exploratory program. The program is designed to introduce young people to an exciting career in public safety. These students completed the eight-week course with Oakland Police and Fire, where they received hands-on experience, CPR certification, and learned what it takes to be a first responder. Come on, in, come on down, these boys. That's all the big and brave in that. That's part of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Glover, would you do the honor of introducing our participants? Mayor, I just want to thank you and City Council for allowing us to come over. Um, James, will you come up? Uh, Aaron, <coughs> Joey, Kevin, Jacob, Caitlin, they're cool. <laughs> hey, Brad, <Brianna>, come on. <laughs> You're going to have to get kind of in front there, get the picture. Like, do two rows. <laughs> <laughs> fire training, some CPR stuff, um, they get into our virtual reality Apex, just a kind of condensed version of what our Citizens Law Enforcement Academy does when we try to gear it around the uh, younger people. Yeah. Try to give them a little insight into the police and fire world, see if they might be in there. Good. That's good looking Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sergeant Wade Foster was the first officer on the scene. He located a woman lying near the front entry who did not have a pulse and who was not breathing. He began chest compressions and directed the next arriving officer to retrieve their AED automated external defibrillator units. 
They continue to think we are in a plant there. AED is up like the fire department engine one arrived on scene and assumed patient care. Lieutenant Paramedic Henry Willifer, come down, Henry. Fire Sergeant Paramedic Michael Henderson, Fire Paramedic Tara Benillon, and Probationary Firefighter Kirkland Pugh. <coughs> Quickly and applied a, uh, a, it's called Lucas, just a, a mechanical CCR device. And, uh, the crew applied their defibrillator, delivered a subsequent shock, and administered the first round of medication to the patient. 13 minutes after Sergeant Foster's arrival, medics detected a pulse. Engine One's crew prepared the patient to transport to East Alabama Medical Center with fire medic Vanilla and firefighter Q riding along to assist with continued care. Because Opelika Police Department personnel began immediate CPR on arrival, the Opelika Fire Department medics were able to successfully identify the type of cardiac episode the woman had and administer proper defibrillation and drug therapy they ensured she received the proper medical treatment. She spent 16 days in the hospital before being released on February 8, 2024. These men and women acted in a professional manner, saving the life of an individual that without proper and prompt action would otherwise have been lost. We thank you very, very much. Kirkland hadn't been here long. I asked him if he even knew what was going on. <laughs> But he did answer right. He said, well, I, I did everything Terry told me to do. <laughs> so that was good enough. Public Access Defibrillator Program 
makes everyone a first responder. Your community has these AEDs all along your walking trails, within your little leaf fields, within all your community centers, and within all city public buildings. With little to no knowledge, any civilian can uh, begin the necessary actions to save the life of someone suffering from cardiac arrest. And furthermore, Buffalo Let Go is able to um, equip all police officers with AEDs in the back of their patrol cars. As you've, seen here, as you've seen here tonight, this can be and make all the difference. Because of the city of Opelika's dedication to becoming a heart-safe community, on behalf of Cardiac Solutions, I want to present Mayor Gary Fuller, Police Chief Shane Healy, and Fire Chief Shane Boyd with these awards. So thank you very much for investing in your community and leading cities in Alabama towards becoming a heart-safe state. Thank you. Thank you. I have one more uh, presentation, Mr. President. I'd like to invite uh, Councilman George Allen to come down and members of the Character Council to uh, join me down front. Let me tell you what, I got to hear these sing Sunday morning early. It was early, and your voice was good. Thank you. <laughs> we had a beautiful Easter sunrise first, and Brother Liam was the uh, pastor and did a nice job. Whereas the city of Opelika knows the importance of having citizens with honorable character qualities based on the moral standards upon which our nation and legal system are established. We desire to build upon our heritage and making Opelika a place where families are strong, neighbors are caring, homes and streets are safe, education effective, businesses productive, and citizens feel to, uh, to make wise choices for their lives and for their families. And whereas our children learn and develop best in a safe school atmosphere in which character is exemplified, taught, and strengthened, research shows that workplace morale, employee safety, productivity, and corporate performance are significantly improved where positive character and qualities are expected and recognized, and such actions are essential in competition in the global market. Whereas the Character Council of Hope of Life, and these are the main movers and shakers right here. And uh, thank you all for what y'all are doing. They have uh, been organizing, promoting, developing, and reinforcing a strong character environment in all aspects that touch the lives of Hope of Life citizens. Identify and recognize the best practices and resources that build and reinforce positive character attributes and facilitate access, coordination, and implementation of these resources to continue Opelika's recognition as a city of character. Now, therefore, I'm Gary Fuller, Mayor of the City of Opelika, and we're about to claim the week of April 1st through April 5th as Character Week in Opelika, and call upon all citizens of Opelika to extend the hand of friendship to their neighbors and unite in service to our community. Thank you so much, Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the front row. 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 We're here in Mr. Jones. Mr. President, we have one public hearing tonight. The public hearing is for a demolition cost assessment at 3807 Heritage Place. I declare this public hearing open. Anyone would like to speak for or against this issue, come to the podium to my left and do so at this time. Having no one, I declare the public hearing closed. Okay, 
Okay, now is the time for you to speak to the council about anything that's on the agenda. Please come to the podium to my left. If you have not already, please sign in the sign sheet with your name and address stuff on email. If you do speak, please state your name and address clearly. Keep it three minutes or less. Thanks. Having no one move on to general business, please. President, first item under general business, general business is a request for a downtown street closure from Red Clay Brewing Company. This is a food truck event on April 11th, 2024. Andrew, we have a motion for approval. So moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there discussion? Have the night call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Small. Aye. Mr. Ralph. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted out. Second item is a request for a downtown street closure. Also from Red Clay Brewing Company for a bike night event on April 18th, 2024. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Have a night call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mrs. North. Aye. Mr. Ralph. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Third and final item is a request for a temporary street closure. This is for a Bent Creek neighborhood block picnic on April 27th, 2024. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a night call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Aye. Aye. Mr. Ralph. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Resolutions, Mr. Gunner? Mr. President, the first resolution approved the uh, travel expense report submitted by Rashard Talbert of the Parks and Recreation Department and Mayor Fuller. Is there a motion for approval? So Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a line call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Small. Aye. Mr. Rouse. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number two authorizes the city to dispose of fire eye security software, which is a needed personal property owned by the city of Oak Lake. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a night call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Moore. Aye. Mr. Ralph. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted up. Resolution number three authorizes Oak Lake Power Services to purchase a substation control building from Modular Connections, LLC, at a cost not to exceed $171,429. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. So moved. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Have a night call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Small. Aye. Mr. Ralph. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number four uh, approves a first amendment to project agreement signed between the city of Opelika and BAH Investments, LLC. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a night call roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Small. Aye. Mr. Ruff. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All voted aye. Resolution number five approves change order number one to the contract between the City of Opelika and DNJ Enterprises for the construction of the Veterans Parkway and Academy Drive roundabout. Uh, this uh, particular change order provides for the installation of additional water service lines uh, at an additional cost of $44,290, resulting in a new contract amount of $1,199,402. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Um, discussion. So this happens a lot with change orders. Can someone explain to me, it seems to always, it's water driven. Yes, sir, I can explain. Uh, during the design process, uh, we got with the water board and they had some um, revisions to the existing water lines they wanted made. Um, and the estimate for the, all these revisions and this uh, basically this relocation of fire hydrant was upwards of about of over $300,000. Uh, we determined, um, and with their concurrence, that 
some of these changes were not required in the contract, in the initial contract during the bid, so we eliminated them from the bid, all the water projects from the bid, knowing that this fire hydrant still had to be relocated out of the, out of the way of the new roundabout. So um, this is a smaller version of the water project that was intended, but because we thought that the larger part of it wasn't necessary because the lines were newer, and things like that. That's why we added this back to the project. Is, so is this unforeseeable or oversight? Or? We knew it was there because it was part of the original design. Mm -hmm. But when we eliminated all the water, this got eliminated as well. Knowing we would bring it back at a later time. So knowing that you'd do a change order for a bed? Pardon me? So knowing that you were going to do a change order for a bed? For a so did you do it knowing that you there was going to be a change order later on? Yes, that's correct. That kind of seems backwards, but... Well, I mean, yeah, I, I understand. Uh, and, and instead of um, picking out some of the water, you know, uh, and to, to do the bid with, we just eliminated it all and just added this back. That's the gist of it all. That's the justification of it all. Mm -hmm. But it was designed in originally, but it was just eliminated with the rest of the water that we eliminated from the entire project. Other questions? Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. North? Nay. Mr. Rapp? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Three ayes, one nay. Motion carries. Resolution number six uh, revises the job description and reclassifies the pay grade for the classification of Director of Opal Life Environmental Services. Uh, there will be several functions or duties added to this position in the job description. Those will include uh, code enforcement, uh, uh, litter control, and street sweeping. Uh, the, the pay grade will increase from pay grade 21 to pay grade 27, and the position will go from a contractual service position to a classified service position, which is a merit service position. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Discussion. Um, can someone explain to me the change in code enforcement? So years ago, code, code enforcement was one, one person that worked out in building inspection. <clears throat> and that was the original code enforcement person when the city council passed the ordinance to have that enforcement capability. So as time has gone on, that it grew to a weekend person and that's three full-time people that work some weekend days and then through the week. And so it has become, um, it was moved from uh, building inspection as busy as they were over to revenue and we combined the jobs from uh, revenue enforcement, code enforcement, and made them common jobs. And it has simply um, outlived its uh, design there because of all the things that we're doing as, as the city grows. Um, and this was an opportunity with uh, Terry White's retirement, and he was a contract employee. And we had J.R. Stabler, who is now retiring, that was there. So we changed the job to include um, these areas, these duties overlap somewhat. Uh, they work on similar uh, projects or complaints or pro uh, problems with properties uh, throughout the city. So it was a it was a good fit to put there, and that's what we're that's what we're doing. With it. So who's going to do the in code enforcement for the revenue side? We'll have to come back whenever, whenever that's done. Right now, um, Lily will be doing it until we'll come back for that job and ask for that. We're going to get her back and go out in the community. I mean, there. I mean, is she going to be doing it herself, or is there going to who's going to be doing it in the meantime? Well, we haven't made these moves yet. Okay. We just wanted to get this job description. So when we hired the person, we knew we were getting a person, and the job was described as it will be that we'll be bringing back closer forward time for the new budget or during the summer. Yeah. Uh, whenever we feel like we can make these moves. I mean, I feel like it's been really successful on the revenue side. 
just because, I mean, they're out there in the community every day and they're in the businesses and they're walking around and they're finding things. The chiropractic shop that I go to right next to there is a small little Mexican uh, supermarket. And they recently got busted for selling alcohol and had all these, you know, things that they shouldn't have in there. And that was found out by one of the code enforcement officers here in Oplica, uh, Josh Hughes. And, you know, it's just having that type of proactiveness in the community, I think, is very essential, especially because the beginning of business license in Oplica is not easy. It's confusing and it's very, it's very um, cumbersome. So I feel like having someone in the community on the revenue side is is really important rather than, you know, just looking at that. That was the most surprising thing that I saw in the change of description was an actual switch in a department from basically our front line. I mean, when we were fighting this whole, um, the rental inspection ordinance, I mean, those are code enforcement officers are, are the front line in the community and they see things before we usually see them. And they're our first, I mean, for me, is they're my first go-to person. Hey, you know, is this an issue? Have you seen this before? And not having that, I mean, I think it's a, a very critical part of our our government that I don't want to see kind of just get put on lead payments. Yes, sir. And, and we don't see that we're going to see any slack on it. We'll still have people out there. Okay. Uh, Mr. White's position, was that bit back then? Like teaching our someone in his place yet? Yeah. Mr. Is it stable? Mm -hmm. um, will there be a person hired in his space or will it be solely this new position? When he retires, he said he's retired. So when we get the new person in place, mm -hmm. um, that would be a determination that he would make what they did uh, before Tier retired as they put in two. Um, two people that go out and check routes, they're, they're lead people, uh, jobs that, that were approved. And so that would be up to him to determine whether that is sufficient to do what we're doing or whether that job would need to be uh, filled. And so uh, we certainly want them to have all the help that they need, but we don't we don't want to put people in that we don't that we don't can't utilize. And so um, I would think that the, that the person that's hired for this job uh, would be the best person to determine, uh, bring bring that to us to figure out whether we need to fill that job. Um, what's the difference in um, salary amount from the pay rate differences? 21 to 27, I believe. Was well, Terry White was a, uh, was a contract employee now I know the new new position. Um, yes, ma'am. So that job twenty one, that pay grade had not been upgraded for over ten years. Mm -hmm. So the twenty seven, and it has the start and pay there for that job slide. I don't know what twenty one start and pay was. Oh, okay. Uh, but that's what we felt like was in line for a department head level job with the responsibilities they were on. Okay. Thank you. Call roll, please. Mr. Rapp? Aye. Ms. Norm? Nay. Mr. Rapp? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Three ayes, one nay. Motion carries. <clears throat> Resolution number seven levies a, an assessment in the amount of $17,540.51 against the property located at 3807 Heritage Place for the demolition and removal of an unsafe building. Is there a motion for approval? So I move. There's a second. Second. Is there a discussion? Have an uncall roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mr. Ralph? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted on. Resolution number eight approves a special appropriation to envision Opelika in the amount of three thousand uh, dollars to be earmarked for the Opelika Character Council. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Have a night call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. Norman? Aye. Mr. Rupp? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted on. Ordinance is Mr. Gunner. Uh, resolution, I mean, ordinance number one is on the table and would require 
a motion to remove from the table. This is an ordinance to amend the development plan for Brookstone PUD. Is there a motion to remove this from the table? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All voted out or removed from the table. Now, is there a motion to amend the master plan for Brookstone PUD? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Yes. Um, as we talked about earlier during the work session, um, the meeting that we had with between Holland Homes and the constituents, um, I, I think at times we were talking about the news phase, and my biggest argument has been density. That did not change. My vote will not change. Others? Um, I appreciate the time that was taken out. Um, Holland's uh, homes follow the instructions that were uh, laid by this council and met with uh, their, the constituents that live in that area um, in a very cramped space. So, and I want to apologize to the citizens that had to be kind of crammed into that very small uh, hot space over at the like a chamber when we could have provided something different. But I appreciate that they showed up and they were able to communicate their needs. Um, I was able to follow back up with uh, Holland Homes as well as some of the citizens that attended there. They were able to meet a significant number of um, items that they laid out specific to their complaints, the ones that they actually mentioned here. And um, I just appreciate that. Um, that's how we want the process to work. If our citizens have an issue, um, I appreciate them coming to us. I also appreciate this council for uh, seeing the importance of that, going out listening to those concerns, and then um, having uh, uh, our, our community partners make necessary adjustments in order to please our citizens. Thank you very much. Call roll, please. Mr. Allen? Aye. Ms. North? Aye. Mr. Ralph? Nay. Mr. Smith? Aye. Motion carries to approve. Three ayes, one nay. <clears throat> Ordinance number two is also on the table and will require a motion to remove from the table. This is an ordinance uh, to amend the zoning map of the city of Opelika by rezoning a 1.24 acre parcel of land located at 414 North 10th Street from an R2 district to an I1 district. Is there a motion to remove this from the table? And I have one that will remain. Ms. Governor. Ordinance number three is before the council for first reading. If approved, this ordinance will approve uh, an, an annexation of a two acre parcel of land located at 5400 U.S. Highway 431. The petitioners are Shelley A. Perry and Annie P. Perry. Is there a member of the council that would introduce this uh, ordinance, please? My pleasure. Stars, thank you for doing so. Um, under appointments, uh, we have a uh, reappointment of Mr. Jeffrey Kildare to the Water Board. See you both like for a new term that would expire May the 4th of 2030. Is there a motion to reappoint Mr. Kildare? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Call roll, please. Mr. Al? Aye. Mr. North? Aye. Mr. Rapp? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. All the guys? All right. Now will be the time if you'd like to speak to the council about anything else that's not on the agenda. Please come to the podium to my left. If you have not registered, please sign in the sign sheet, your name, telephone address, and email. Please state your name clearly and your address when you speak. Three minutes to list. Thanks. Name Lindbergh B. Jackson. I am uh, at 814 North County Street, Harvard, Alabama. I am here to remind, well, the mayor just left, I'm sure someone reminded him of a issue that uh, a situation at Alton Court where it dead ends. Uh, I'd ask for someone to look at that because it dead ends and there has been some vandalism and some, some people by camping out on the opposite end near the new Frederick Road. And my tenant is concerned because of the lighting 
and the signage that doesn't say it's a dead end street. Now, I am just here for a reminder that maybe the engineer or whomever to take a look at that, Mr. Allen, that's in your district. I, I tend constantly kind of reminds me that it's dark, people come in and they park because it's a dead end street. It probably at some point in time will go through or either there will be a turnaround there. But I would like for someone, maybe the engineer, someone from the power source department to take a look at that because even though I'm adding cameras, it's going to make it pretty hard to see uh, vehicle identification numbers and, and people that are parking at the dead end of that street. There's a business that faces South Long Street there and people that may want to make their little transactions down there and walk back up the street and they take the liberty to take and park at that dead end, make their transactions and pull back out. My tenant is saying unless we can do something, he may have to move, even though he has a lease that he's buying to for another probably four or five months. If I can just get some signage and some lighting and possibly some maybe clearing or some underbrush on the right of way, I would be very grateful for that. Thank you. I have anyone. Um, the character trait of the month is honesty, fairness, and straightforwardness of conduct. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. There's a second. Second. All roll, please. Mr. Allen. Aye. 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 Ralph. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye.